G'day, John for the Hot End. Today we're going to look at moose, and I don't mean the bovine variety. We will fight for bovine freedom and hold our large heads high. Okay, we're back, and as you can see, I'm surrounded. Um, we have quite a backlog of stuff that we need to review, so we're actually running prints on a few different things here. There's this one here, which is a, uh, a large cossel, which is uh, currently trying to put some prints out. This one has auto level and a few things. And then there's this one over here, which is the, uh, the Athabot. Uh, and that's got a dual extruder head thing, so, but they're coming in later videos. Today we're talking about the moose. This is a moose. This started out as a Kickstarter project, which was uh, quite well subscribed, I believe. And they contacted us and said, would we mind uh, running it through its paces to see how it goes? And well, I'm, to be honest, I was a bit surprised because if you have a look on their website, there's actually three versions of the Moose. There's the Moose 1, the Moose 2 and the Moose 3, which is very imaginative of them in their naming. This is the Moose 1 format. And according to their website, this is not the best 3D printer option of the three. The best 3D printer option is the Moose 3. But anyway, they sent us the 1. so. Here we have it. This one comes with the one vertical or one horizontal and the Y plane. It comes with three heads. The one you can see at the moment zapping array there is the laser head. It also comes with a CNC head. You can see that. And it also comes with the 3D printer head. Changing the head is uh, four screws at the back of this carriage here. Uh, you just undo the screws, pop off the head, pop out the clip, bang in the new one. Takes a minute. Probably could have been a little bit slicker if they had some sort of clips or magnets or, but anyway. Four screws does that. The bed uh, is changed quite easily. There's some holes in the bed here, in the base rather, that you stick your uh, hex wrench up through to undo the bed and swap that bed for this bed which is the 3D printer bed and uh, away you go. Right, how does it work? Moose have their own software that uh, drives this thing particularly for the laser and the CNC. Uh, it's called the Moose Suite which you can get from the link down below. Uh, it's actually a Google Drive site which has their manuals, um, their instructions, um, the firmwares uh, and uh, a bit of other information that uh, you may need. So it's all there. The first thing I tried to do with this was 3D print, naturally enough, seeing we do mainly 3D print stuff, and I had problems. Now there are, have been other people that have reviewed this machine and you will see by them that um, the first problem is loading the filament which is loaded through this little hole here. This is a totally sealed self-contained unit with a hot end nozzle at the other side. When you load the filament in, it's very close to the uh, extruder fan which sits here. So unless you get the filament sitting just right, it angles across and runs into the blades of the fan and scares the living bejesus out of you. The shit's gonna hit the fan. So that was one problem that I found with the sealed head. After I read the instructions, which I do eventually, uh, it does say that you should feed the filament via the uh, move axis system, which is via this little doover here which is, looks like an iPhone, but it's actually the controller for the machine. It's got a magnetic back, so it just sits on there, and it, it's, that's quite nifty, I quite like that. But, getting back to this, as I said, before I read the instructions, I tried to remove the filament, 
uh, just by pressing the, the uh, spring loader on the front and of course it jam. What do you do when you've got a filament jam in a totally sealed hot end unit? Uh, after you stop swearing and cursing, you start pulling the thing apart, which I did. Three hours later, I managed to clear the blockage inside the PTFE tubing past the drive gear of the extruder and put the thing all back together again. Uh, it was not an easy job, believe me. So I got it working again. When I got it working again, I found that I actually had the heat block too close to the extruder and therefore couldn't get any heat into the nozzle. It was all dissipating into the extruder. So I had to pull it apart again. So another two hours, because I knew what I was doing this time, put it all back together, dropped the nozzle down, dropped the uh, heat block down, got it all back together, started printing again. Unfortunately, I forgot to tighten the nozzle after I heated it, and consequently, I had a filament leak everywhere through, uh, it was horrible. Pull it apart again to fix that and tighten it all up. In the top here where the uh, cable connects, there is a circuit board, which uh, I'd imagine must contain some drivers of some sort because everything in here, the nozzle, the, the, uh, sorry, the heater, the thermistor, the two fans, all connect to this one board that sits into the top. Now I'm suspecting that I may have in my endeavours to pull this thing apart, damaged something on that board because now it heats up but it doesn't stop heating. Uh, I ask it to heat to 220. I'm sorry Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. It just keeps going past 220 until it hits the uh, overheat and cuts out. So basically I killed it. Uh, I have asked Moose to send me a either a replacement head or a replacement board so I can get it running again, but uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from them on that. As I've said, 90% of the problem was caused by me but it's a problem, a filament jam is a problem that can happen to anybody. And to fix it in this thing, yeah, well, just don't go there. I did manage to get a couple of prints. This is a 40 millimeter cube. That one is complete. Uh, these ones are not, uh, for one reason or another, they got stopped. But this is the only completed print I managed to get out of the head before, it, before I killed it. As I said, it's a 40 millimeter cube. I've put this uh, under the calipers. It is 39.95 by 40.05, according to my calipers, which is damned accurate. So not too bad at all. The print quality is at best ordinary um, for a printer that you're paying fairly big dollars for uh, the print quality as a 3d printer is not good but as they say on their website this is not the 3d printer option for this machine but nevertheless it will 3d print the laser engraver is a blue light laser it's a blue light what does it do Turns blue. Um, as you can see, it's working away at the moment. The software that runs this, the Moose Suite, is very, very intuitive, very easy to use. And you'll see by the photos of these that I will put up that you can see a bit better. These are some that I did. Uh, that's a photo. Um, that's that one. And on the back here, you'll see a head that you'll probably recall. These, uh, the photos that I did, I did absolutely nothing to them before I printed them, except turn them into black and white. Uh, I didn't do any enhancement. I didn't do any um, uh, adjustments on the blacks or the whites. I just straight up photos, straight into their software uh, and straight into the machine. And I'd have to say that that is the most detailed laser engraver I have ever seen. It is fantastic. The shading, the, uh, the detail is spot on perfect. So 
As far as a laser engraver goes, this thing is brilliant. It's also a CNC, a CNC head with a little chuck. Um, and one of the problems, which I shall list later, um, is that I had to put a, a little bit out of my Dremel in there to get it working. I'll tell you why in a minute. That's the engraver head. Again, four screws, bang, plug it in, away you go. I did an engraving, which is a little hard to see, but you'll see a photo of it. Um, the engraving procedure is uh, quite slow uh, and noisy and messy, uh, as they all are, but it still worked really well. It uh, handled the, the shading uh, nicely. It, uh, it worked really well considering I was using a burr bit and not a CNC detail bit. Okay, now a few things that I like about it. I like the little controller here. It uh, is nice and handy, it's touch screen, it makes homing the head uh, very simple. Um, it's um, got everything that you need on there like your preheats and uh, homing and all the rest of it and it, it, it's, it's quite nice, I like that. I like the solid build of it. This thing is built like a tank or as we say, built like a brick shit house. Built like a brick shit house, exceptionally well constructed, strong or tough. It is very, very solid. It's solid metal, solid aluminium all the way through. These are fully enclosed, this is how it comes, you just it took me five minutes to put it together, literally. I'm not sure how these will go if you need to do anything to them. Um, you would have to pull them apart, no doubt, but there's no belts to worry about, so hopefully you would never have to get inside one of these. It is a lead screw design inside there. Uh, so as I said, no belts. It's uh, extremely accurate as far as the lead screws go. Very, very nice build. It runs, the wiring is uh, sitting at the back here, on either your, straight from your computer, like a normal printer, or it runs from a micro SD card, or a USB stick, which is quite unusual. I haven't seen that before. You can actually run the machine, which it actually is running right now, off a uh, flash drive, in the back of the machine. So that that is really good, I like that. Um, I did have trouble getting the engraver to run off the flash drive. I could only get that to run off the, the, uh, the card. What I don't like about this thing is what you see is what it came with to me, which is the Moose version one with the 3D print head, the CNC head, the laser head, the touch screen, cables, um, chuck key and a few spare screws, uh, the print bed, and that was it, nothing else. So, as I was saying, this was out of my Dremel. There was no CNC cutting piece, cutting bit with it. So I had nothing to play with. Um, so if I hadn't have had my Dremel, I wouldn't have had anything to play with. You must be playing with your own um, I do have a normal router, but the, the bits didn't fit the chuck. So, um, that was one gripe. The other gripe is there was no paperwork with this machine whatsoever. Uh, not even a barcode or a QR or anything to lead me to where to find the paperwork. So I had to contact Moose uh, and they sent me a link to a Google Drive site which had everything on it. The instruction manuals, uh, the uh, safety procedures, uh, the firmware, that type of thing, and the, uh, the Moose suite software. So once I got that, I was able to, to start playing around with it. The other thing that really upset me was this thing has a laser engraver, and if I hadn't have downloaded the safety instructions, uh, I could have done some serious damage. It was just fortunate that I had a pair of safety glasses that I could actually play with it. But, you know, it's, it should have come with something to tell you that that laser is dangerous. Now, the, 
machine itself comes as standard. The Moose One with the 3D print head and it is 250 odd US dollars to buy. The other heads that I have that came are all additional on top of that. So you're looking at a fairly pricey machine that doesn't really 3D print very well, that is very difficult to fix and my biggest gripe of all is it's too damn small. There seem to be a lot of these on the market now, the Trinus comes to mind and there are several others that I've seen and I really don't see the point in these things. So what, what can you do with it with 120 by 120 bed? You, you could make mosaic tiles and inlay them into a tabletop or something or I don't know what you can do. You could engrave on the handle of your screwdriver or something. But really I don't see the point in, in that size of machine. I'm not talking specifically this machine. All of these machines are just too small for my liking. All right, that's my take on the Moose. Um, a great machine in some respects, <coughs> in others, not so. Um, would I buy one? Mm, uh, for a 3D printer, no, I wouldn't. Uh, for a laser and CNC on a very small scale, yeah, it works great. No problem at all. Uh, don't forget to hit like if you like uh, our videos. If you don't like them, by all means, hit the don't like, but leave a comment so that we know what it was that you didn't like so we can do something about it. Uh, don't forget that we are available on all sorts of uh, formats such as Twitter, Facebook, we're everywhere, so you, you can find us. Patreon is a good way to uh, let us know that you really care. Uh, and you can support Anthony seeing he's unemployed. As I said, we have a lot more stuff to do to get through to do reviews on, so you'll be seeing me again, unfortunately or fortunately, very soon. So until then, I'll catch you. Bye.